Yeah, hi. Um, very different video, obviously. But I think this should be discussed. So, obviously, now there is like, oh, Tim Burton's was they called racist for casting black actors. <laughs> well, as bullies. Which is fine. I mean, you do you. But that has been a thing since 2016. And so we have this character <laughs> article. And I remember reading somewhere like he doesn't want to have the pressure of having to have dark skinned people or non Caucasian people because, well, it's obviously like. <sighs> Well, it's the latest thing, you know, people get pressured into it. And as you can see here, with uh, Samuel L. Jackson, like, it's not his fault. He's still a good... Uh, well, he's a good director. And I can admit to, yeah, like, obviously I haven't cared about this. But I also think that as a sociologist, I do want to discuss this. And I don't do this to offend anyone or hate on Tim Burton, I still like him, but I want to see if certain things really hold up. So I have picked, and here we have the top 10 movies of 2016. How much can you actually say that he sh felt pressured and because of it he doesn't want to have? dark-skinned people because as you can see here this is number one of 2016 we have one dark-skinned character in the top cast and we have one that's uh, Asian I would say so obviously there isn't a lot of pressure in this one that he should feel that he has like have to have a dark skin character. Number two, The Wailing. This is obviously, as you can see, a, I would say, South Korean movie because of all the names. Uh, well, it doesn't say. So here we have a top movie that's South Korean. Well, obviously, they don't really feel the need to have any Caucasian people, as to say. And here we have Hell or High Water. Here we have the top cast. And I don't really see any dark-skinned person. So, obviously, 2016 so far doesn't go that well. Green Room. Top cast. I don't really see any dark skinned person or non-Caucasian. Well, maybe Casey Brown, but he plays a drummer, so... In the main cast we have a lot of uh, Caucasian. And here we have what I believe is South Korean again. It's at least Asian. So out of five, the top five of 2016, we have three that are <laughs> like produced in the westernized uh, countries. And we had very few dark-skinned or non-Caucasian people. And we have two that is made by non-Caucasian people where they had non-Caucasian main cast. So obviously around 2016, I don't think this really should have been as blown up as it apparently is. But I also do think it's very interesting that Tim Burton himself actually most of the time do hire white people. Because like, for example, he does have a lot of, uh, what to say, stop motion movies. I mean, what is the issue there? 
as to not have dark-skinned people, non-Caucasian people do the voices. For example, in Nightmare Before Christmas, you have Emily. She is fucking blue. <laughs> but yeah, here you go. And yeah, Jan Ortega considers herself 75% Mexican and 25% Puerto Rican leads Wednesday cast. So yeah, I would say that now with Wednesday 2022, um, they just bring up uh, from 2016. Nowadays, pe nowadays people are talking about it more, but things either call for things or they don't. So let's see, uh, does he still have the push nowadays to have dark skinned people? So we take the top five of 2022. And here we have the Banshees of Inisern. I have never seen any of the movie basically. So we have a lot of unknown in this one, which is the top five. But from those that do have picture, they're all white. <laughs> so that's, that's bad. I don't like that. Uh, everything, everywhere, all at once. So here we can see that it's a little bit more mixed, I have to say, which is good. Though it does seem that it's mostly Asian people and uh, Caucasian people, which is fine. Yeah, a middle-aged Chinese immigrant, blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. Top Gun, whoa. Here we see two that I can identify. Three and two Asian people, and Danny Ramirez is probably more Mexican, Latin America, that type. So we do have more, which is definitely good. But I would say that overall, we do have like some quite white people, as to say. Uh, boiling point. Here we do see around the same as the last one, you do have a bit of like dark-skinned people, we have some <laughs> Mexican, Latin, I don't really know what to call them. But we do have a good variety. In the Batman we have... Hmm. Not as much variety from what I can see. So the biggest thing is the one with the least variety out of the top five. And then we can see Wednesday. Top cast. Um, yeah, I would say there is actually quite a good variety, so obviously it's not anything with the variety of people. Though as said, like I haven't watched most of the movies I looked up the cast about. But yeah, I do feel like Tim Burton does keep up with what seems to be the big thing for the years. Like, yeah, he does have actually quite good variety compared to the other ones when it comes to cast, I would say. At least in the top cast. I mean, it's about the same as all the rest. So he does keep around the, 
middle thing, you know? He does keep the average. So, I do say that I can understand from his point of view that people are overreacting. And I also see why people react so hard since the dark skinned people are mostly bullies apparently. I have not seen it. But uh, yeah, I do find it a bit strange that the movies I remember, which, well, we can just look at it. Um, um, we can take Corpse Bride and Sweeney Todd. No, no, actually we don't do that. Um, yeah. Alice in Wonderland, let's go. That's 2016. As you can see, 2016, very, <laughs> very white, so to say. And then we can do a Dumbo 2019. Here is also quite white. I mean, we have this dude. <laughs> You know, the, I'm not going to pronounce that. And then we also have this Nick, Nico Parker, but otherwise it's quite white. So yeah, not like the best. And with this one, which I do not see would have any issue hiring any dark skinned people, all white. And I mean, they're goddamn blue. <laughs> At least Emily is blue. Like, I don't really see why that would have to be Helena, like his wife. But I also know that he does go for people he like knows about. And obviously the typical Johnny Depp and his, and his own wife he usually goes for. But yeah, I do find it strange that even in like most CGI, like Dumbo, there is still a lot of pale visible, visible representation. And I did see that one, some creator on YouTube did think that, well, Tim Burton said that we don't fit the, the vibe, the theme of what he usually goes for. And I gave him the benefit of the doubt. Like, yes, Tim Burton, he do prefer pale, very, very pale, <laughs> you know, like, he does want some, like, gothic-ish. Yeah, like, here you have Eva Green. She is very pale, but I also believe that like, why go for the Caucasian paleness when there is paleness even for dark skinned people? Like this, I think she looks very pale to be dark skinned. And I mean, dark skinned people also have like cool toned skin and all that that I do think fit with his more gothic theme. So I would say it's very interesting. I do believe it deserves to be talked about more. I don't think we should hate on everyone, obviously. Uh, this, as I said before, this is not to hate on anyone. This is not to like spread like, oh yeah, we should have less star people in the industry. Definitely not. I don't see why it would make a difference to have light-skinned people or dark-skinned people. I mean, let's look up Avatar. This one came out in 2009. And as you can see, they have quite a good representation for being 2009. And why doesn't it matter? Because the main characters are goddamn blue. It doesn't matter. Like, you do you. They're blue either way. 
so I don't think that Tim Burton should actually talk about the aesthetic. But obviously he can talk about that he doesn't want to feel pressured. Which I don't really get because as you see in, in the video, he does keep around the same amount as it usually is for the top five movies of the year. So if we go from statistics, it's nothing wrong with how he makes the movies. Obviously it is upsetting that it is darker skinned people that got to be the bullies. But I don't know if he even thinks about it as race or if he just be like, oh yeah, let's, uh, these guys, they seem good to be bullies. But then we can also discuss the fact that, well, is it subconscious racism or what's going on? So this is obviously a weird, weird, weird video but I do think uh, this is something to be talked about because I don't think you can fully hate on Tim Burton obviously there is something that should be discussed when it comes to like top movies that why is there quite weird when it comes to like having people of non-Caucasian background in it because yes, as you guys saw, it is better, but can we really say it's good? But yeah, uh, please do think about it. Uh, I'm not here to spread hate as said, so please do not feel offended. This is only to spread knowledge. And I am very open to have discussions in the comments about this, though I do want people to stay professional as to say I don't want to be like oh yeah you're just uh, for Tim Burton I have a bias towards Tim Burton but obviously I do find it a little bit weird that the bullies would be the dark skinned people I don't really know the thought process behind it and because I don't know that I can't really say if it's truly right truly wrong it's social science I have to know more. So yeah, peace.